good morning, and welcome to Prince of Peace on this All Saints Sunday, a day where we, we remember the saints among us and those who have gone on before us, knowing full well that neither death nor life, nothing can separate us from the love of God. This year, we have invited you to make butterflies as a way to name the saints of our lives together in community. To my right, you can see our butterfly tree that has named over 50 saints of this community. Thanks be to God. Let us rise now for the order of confession and forgiveness. Christ calls us to share the heavenly banquet of his love, where all the saints in earth and heaven Knowing our unworthiness and sin, let us ask from him both mercy and forgiveness. Amen. Amen. Eternal God, in every age you have raised up men and women to live and die in faith. Forgive our indifference to your will. You have commanded us to speak, but we have been silent. You have called us to do what is just, but we have been fearful. Have mercy on us, your faithless servants. Keep before us faithful people for us to follow. So that with your courage and love, we may inherit the kingdom promised in Jesus Christ and reign with him forever. Amen. You are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. Amen. Amen. The grace that is Christ's gift to us, the love of God, and the unity of the Spirit in bond of peace be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment, and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. I will bless the Lord at all times. The Lord's praise shall continually be in my mouth. Lord, bless the reading of your word. Make it come alive in our hearts. Today's first reading is from the book of Revelation, chapter 7. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all the tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, robed in white? And where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more. And thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat, 
for the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Today's psalm is Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. The praise of God shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord. Let the lowly hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt God's name together. I sought the Lord, who answered me and delivered me from all my terrors. Look upon the Lord and be radiant. Let your faces not be ashamed. I called in my affliction, and the Lord heard me and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear the Lord and delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who take refuge in God. Fear the Lord, you saints of the Lord. For those who fear the Lord lack nothing. The lions are in want and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. O oh Lord, you redeem the life of your servants, and those who put their trust in you will not be punished. The Holy Gospel on this All Saints Sunday comes to us from the Gospel of Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. And after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad. For your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. From our first lesson this day, from the book of Revelation, after this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. Friends in Christ, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. One of the blessings of the pandemic is that I take a walk every day. I'm getting to know my neighbors, and I'm getting to know their dogs. I'm getting to know Mercer County Park. I live right next to the park, but this is the first time that I've really discovered all of the the, the hiking trails within the park, and the creeks, and the footbridges, and the birds of prey that I see often on these walks. Blessed are those who go for a walk. I compare this to my days of going to the gym, which doesn't happen, at least not currently. I look at the gym not so much as a blessing, but more of an ordeal. An ordeal that puts me on treadmills instead of trails, that puts me on stationary bikes instead of footbridges. 
There in front of me is a TV that shows the same cycle of news and sports over and over again. But the thing about a treadmill or a stationary bike is that I can huff and I can puff for 30 minutes and I don't go anywhere. It becomes a bit of an ordeal. 2020, this year of pandemic, protests, and politics, seems to me a lot like going to the gym. We're working really hard. We're working to catch our breath. But it seems like we are in the same place as where we started. November 1st, 2020. In terms of the pandemic, it doesn't look like we have made any progress. In fact, I think we've regressed from back in April 1st. We're kind of just running in place. In regards to the protest, I saw a movie last week, The Trial of the Chicago 7. I recommend it highly. The Chicago 7 were the leaders of the protests in Chicago during the Democratic Convention back in 1968. And the movie was a trial. And really what was on trial was the question. It wasn't the protesters that incited the violence. Or was it the police? I think the movie could have been run or could have been told from 2020. We are all working so hard. We're on the treadmill, but we're not making any progress. And so we come to November 1st, 2020, All Saints Sunday. And it feels like we are still living in the great ordeal, as the book of Revelation speaks about this morning, or the great, the, the, the great tribulation. Here we are, two days away from a presidential election in the midst of a crippling pandemic. And we are trying so hard to navigate. But today... All Saints Sunday is an interlude. I call for all of us to take a break, to take a break so that we can hear the promise that belongs to the people of God. As we turn to Revelation, today, from Revelation chapter 7, it really is an interlude, an interlude between the sixth and the seventh seals in this book. And when the writer says, when these seals are open, there is great destruction. We are told that there is going to be a great earthquake, and the sun will turn black, and the moon will turn red. That's what happens when when you open the sixth seal, and then when you open the seventh seal, we hear that there is sheer silence in heaven for about a half an hour. <laughs> sheer silence as everyone is just made, made speechless at the terror that surrounds. That's the seventh seal. But right in the middle, right between the sixth and seventh seal, is chapter seven of Revelation. Here... The word is said that God's people will be spared. God's people will come out of this great ordeal. After this I looked and there was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages standing before the throne, before the Lamb. A great multitude of all peoples. Compare this to the beginning of chapter 7, where we have that, 
that number of 144,000. And I know a lot of people will, will latch on to this number and say that's, that's the saved, the saved of all human history. That's it, 144,000. But they've missed the symbolism. 144,000 is simply 12 squared times 1,000, the 12 tribes of Israel. All that number is saying is that there will be the faithful remnant of the tribes of Israel up there in heaven, along with this great multitude, people of all languages, from all nations, people of all tribes. Heaven is going to be a place of multicultural diversity. <laughs> there it is, right here in our lesson for this morning. But then it continues, and we hear about what this multitude experiences. One of the elders asked, who are they? Who is this multitude? Where have they come from? And the narrator says, these are they who have come out of the great ordeal. These are they who have stepped off the treadmill. So much of the symbolism in Revelation speaks to the Roman imperial system. The great ordeal, the great tribulation. And this multitude is, are the ones who have come out of this system, who have placed their faith in the Lamb, who have placed their faith in Christ. And now this multitude are receiving the reward of faith. And the writer continues, they will hunger no more. They will thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to the springs of the water of life, and God will wipe every tear from their eyes. Here is the promise for the people of God. That great multitude are our saints. They are the saints of our butterfly tree this morning. They are the saints who we will name in our prayers this morning. But I think it's important to understand on All Saints Sunday that this is not a day just to remember the saints. Just like Revelation is not a book just to envision some future heavenly world. Instead, the saints and this book of Revelation is offered to us to remind us who we are as God's people and what promise awaits. We are kin with our saints. We are people of the promise. And so, on this November 1st, 2020, this Sunday is an interlude from all the craziness that is surrounding us in this year of 2020. And this text will help us Navigate. Today is a day to step off the treadmill. Today is a day to take a walk in the park, or maybe take a walk on the labyrinth, as I've seen a couple of people do already this morning. It is a day to be reminded of who we are and whose we are. The saints this morning in Revelation stand before the throne, the throne of the Lamb, the throne of Christ. And it is Christ who has come through the great ordeal. He hasn't come out of the great ordeal. He's come through the great ordeal. Christ has come through the Roman imperial system. This is what this great ordeal is that, that, that the writer to Revelation is speaking about. 
Death is the ultimate authority that empires can hold over their subjects. It is why Rome nailed Jesus to the cross in the first place. But of course, the cross could not contain Christ. Death could not hold Christ, which proclaims that Jesus stands over imperial systems just like Jesus stands over global pandemics. Jesus stands over civic unrest. And yes, let us remember this this week. Jesus stands over presidential elections. The saints already see this. And today, on All Saints Sunday, we are invited to join the great multitude, to go through this ordeal that we're all living with in 2020, so that like the saints, we too, this day, can take a stand. We can stand with the saints before the, uh, the, the, the throne of Christ, so that we now can face this coming week confident in the promise of who we are. We, too, belong to the multitude. We, too, receive the promise of being God's people. And so this day, let us stand up and let us now with confidence go through these next few days. Amen.
let us confess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. O Lord, our God, we thank you for the many people throughout the ages who have followed your way of life joyfully, who have offered up their very lives so that your life abundant may become manifest and your kingdom may advance. For your love and faithfulness, we will at all times praise your name. O Lord, we thank you for those who chose the way of your Son, our brother, Jesus Christ. In the midst of trial, they held out hope. In the midst of hatred, they kindled love. In the midst of persecutions, they witnessed to your power. In the midst of despair, they clung to your promise. For, for your love and faithfulness, we will at all times praise your name. O oh Lord, we thank you for the truth they learned and passed on to us, that it is by giving that we shall receive, and it is by becoming weak that we shall be strong, it is by loving others that we shall be loved, it is by offering ourselves that the kingdom will unfold. Lord, give us courage to follow your way of life. For, for your love and faithfulness, we will at all times praise your name. Let us give thanks for these brothers and sisters in Christ, to whom God has granted rest from their labors. Almighty God, we name the saints who have died this past year. Ricarda Froelich. Philippa Baron de Santi Wagner. Don Collins. Mary Maglio, Randolph Church, George Oberly, Vanessa Puskar, Rachel Lieberman, Virginia Case. Natalie Ebinger, Pat Thompson, Janice Skolicki, Raymond Erico, Byron Grove, William Troutwine. Doreen Collins, Brian Hunter, Mark Swisher, Vincent Raddy, Ed Fago, Catherine Anzuni, Mark Gold. Bill Flood. Grant us grace to follow them as they followed Christ. Bring us with them to those things no eye has seen nor ear heard which you have prepared for those who love you. Amen. Amen. The peace of the risen Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please greet each other with a sign of peace.
gracious God, everything we have comes from you. You fill us with good things. Our hearts and lives overflow with your abundance. With thanksgiving, we bring to you our time, talents, and tithes. Use these gifts that you have given us to feed others as we have been fed, to serve others as we have been served, and to bless others as we have been blessed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart, as though you have already come. I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And good morning and welcome to worship again on this All Saints Sunday. I want to say thank you uh, to everybody who has uh, donated or created, I should say, uh, a butterfly. Like Kayla said, there's over 50 butterflies on our tree with numerous saints that uh, fill our tree this morning. So thank you. Some of you have asked if you can have your butterflies back and the answer is yes, of course. Uh, just contact me. We will keep the butterfly tree, I think, maybe in the, uh, in the narthex somewhere, but we would just need to coordinate a time when you can come and, and take your butterfly back home and remember your saints. So we say thank you again to all who have contributed to that. We are calling, or inviting, I should say, you to take a walk on the labyrinth uh, today on All Saints Sunday and remember your your saint, uh, you know, the, the weather, who, who knows, but uh, come, there is, right now, there is a table with, a, with votive candles out there that you can light to remember your saint, and like I said, I've seen a couple of people out there already uh, walking the labyrinth, so uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful uh, prayer to remember these, these great saints, this great multitude that reminds us who we are as God's people. Today, begins our fall stewardship emphasis, generosity today. Now more than ever, we are generous, and we call you to be generous in, in this community of faith that we are a part of. Every Sunday, we will be posting an impact story from friends and members of Prince of Peace that speak about the impact this congregation has had in a particular ministry of the church. And this morning, I posted um, a recording from our former field ed student, Henry Burt, as Henry speaks about what field education uh, me meant to him and, and what it means uh, to, to all of the seminarians that have come through us. And right now we have Becca Lobbs, who is our, our field ed student, and this is a, a, a critical part of our ministry here at Prince of Peace. So take a few minutes and listen to Henry. Henry actually is coming to the 11 o'clock service and will be talking to us live, but uh, it is on the Facebook page and that recording is there. And again, every Sunday uh, we will be posting another impact story. Right to the right of me are a bunch of sleeping bags. I count 20. And uh, take a look at my children's sermon that's on, on the Facebook page as well. Next Sunday, we are going to bless the sleeping bags. So you still have a week to, to bring a sleeping bag. Again, it can be new or it can be used in, in good condition. And these sleeping bags, we will bless them and then we will take them down to St. Bartholomew's in Trenton where they will be distributed to the homeless population. 
a way again for Prince of Peace to make a difference in this world. A sleeping bag is a wonderful gift that we can give, uh, especially now as the weather turns colder. This coming Wednesday, prayers for our nation. Who knows where we will be come Wednesday night, but I know for sure we're going to need prayers. So please join us at 7.30 for the live stream. Also, I see in the bulletin here about Christmas wreaths. Some of our people are going to be making these wreaths, and then we will be asking for a donation, and that donation will go to the feeding ministries at St. Bartholomew's. Special thank you to Tim Jenvik, who is recording this live stream. Doug, of course, welcome back, Doug. Doug came back from Maine. I know it was hard, but thank you for coming back home, Doug. And again, thank you for Kayla and Becca for participating in our worship this morning. Let us conclude with the benediction. May the God of all creation, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad, the blessing of God, sovereign, Savior, and Spirit, be with you today and always. Amen. Beloved of God, go in peace to love and serve the world. Thanks be to God.